these things that I, I enjoy thinking about and I take them and I play with them in the way that I view them. So for me, without these wonderful glasses, that means everything is slightly blurry. There's no straight lines. There's nothing solid. Everything kind of blends together. So that really inspires my style and definitely goes with the theme of a view from here. Right. Um, so it, it focuses on the intangible attributes like color and composition and emotion behind the images rather than simple objects and shapes. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that I create them is, is also using tools that aren't precision based. So I use putty knives and household items like combs and, and plastic wrap, um, things that you can, you'd see and you wouldn't think that they would be good tools for art, but I absolutely love using them. They, they add a spontaneity to the work that mimics the way that I see things as well, because nothing, everything is always uh, slightly dirty, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so I prefer the idea of things being interesting, not perfect, because that's, that's the way I see the world. That's my viewpoint. And uh, in contrast to the organic compositions, I add horizontal and vertical lines because the way that my glasses are, I'm constantly seeing frames right. wherever I go. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure you guys can relate being glasses wearers as well. Yeah. Um, I'm always seeing frames, but I'm never focusing on them. They're never the focus of, of what I'm seeing. They are there and they kind of add depth to what I'm looking at because I'm aware that these are close and that's far away. And it just adds a unique perspective and it, it helps to inspire my work, whether it's landscape or abstract or anything like that. Cool. Oh, well, thank you. Well, it's beautiful. I love the colors. Pardon me? I love the colors. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and it looks like there's there. I think those lines do add a lot of depth to the piece, and there's a lot of it looks like there's a lot of texture as well, which maybe speaks to the um, tools that you're using. But it's a beautiful piece. I love the colors; are some of my favorite colors as well. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. That means so much to me. All right. Okay, so next we have Barb Tanyeki. So is. Barb should be here with her work. I don't see her popping up. I just saw her be admitted, so. Um, just scrolling through, Kate, sorry. Um, we could, Barb, if you're there, can you speak up, unmute yourself? Okay, is that better? Oh yeah, yes. now we can hear you, excellent. We can't see you, but we can okay. hear you. I don't think you have your oh, screen. Okay, on. sorry. <laughs> Share screen? Uh, no, um, I think what you want to do is just, I don't think you actually have your video, video on. So Kate actually has your piece up. Oh, there, I think you're coming up now. There you go. Hello, Barb. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How is everyone? Great. How well, are you? A little bit of technical difficulties here. That's okay. I think I'm set up now. <laughs> All right, well, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your piece, Barb. Sure, um, so this piece, I, I did it just prior to the, um, early in 2020, just prior to COVID. Um, so initially my concept was um, something along the lines of offering a different perspective on the land before the city was here. If you zoom in close, you can see how sort of the landscape, the natural landscape, I've morphed it into this, the urban landscape. And then right. it kind of drifts back into um, a natural scene at the far left. Um, but the idea was something along the lines of, um, and the reason why I did it with a circular canvas was how um, things can come full circle. Um, so initially, the land in its natural state and, and everything being temporary in the grand scheme of things, it may return back to that point as, you know, the natural state 
at some point in the future. Um, and so, and how it pertains uh, to the theme this year after a year later, 2021 now, um, I keep getting the word adrift. And so the view from here during COVID is that feeling of being adrift, like we all might've felt at some point during the year. So I, I don't know, that just kind of spoke to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, that certainly captures, I think probably most people's feelings during COVID. <laughs> right, right. Far away. <laughs> That is sort of, uh, it's sort of ethereal too. And then that whole idea of having the natural landscape with the urban landscape, I think it's really kind of like an interesting play of landscapes because it's not actually, if you were sitting there right there and viewing the city skyline, you wouldn't see as much natural landscape, right? You'd see pretty much all cityscapes. So it's kind of an interesting take yeah. on that. Thanks. It was yeah. more of a juxtaposition, a concept piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's actually not what you identify first when you see the piece either. It's kind of like as you get into the piece and sort of look at the story of it. It's really interesting. Right. So at a distance, it almost looks like a natural scene. And this this bit of land on the far right could be almost the island in front of the downtown. But but right. it, as you get closer, you can see that it's that isn't what I was trying to say with the piece. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. And who do we have next? Carol Millen. Okay, and so I'm screen sharing for her, right? Yes, correct. All right. But she should be here to chat. So Carol, maybe yep. unmute yourself. I'm here. Awesome. Excellent. We've got your work on the screen. Hopefully you can Thank see you. it. Thank you. I can see it. So the title of this piece is uh, Color Field Copper, and it's uh, one of seven in the color field series that I did starting in 2019 and finished in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, inspired by sketches that I had made uh, from a short plane ride where the um, land is much more obvious in view than if you're going a longer haul and it's you're flying at a higher altitude. Right. And I'm so intrigued by this perspective that we don't often get to have of the land um, from a much uh, broader perspective. Um, and partly I sort of have that now with my view from my apartment window. I see the city from a different perspective than when I lived on the ground. Um, so all of my work is landscape based, but none of it has a horizon line. Um, I, I consider any work that I do that's inspired by nature as, as landscape, because even if I'm um, examining lichen or in, in inspired by some very particular rock formation, that to me is a landscape. Um, so these works are on paper and they all uh, share the same sort of format of being um, I start with a wash of uh, black India ink on wet paper. Mm -hmm. And then when that's dried, I draw into it. And I like the contrast between the organic uh, process of the pooling of the ink uh, that you can't really control necessarily. And then going in with linear line. Um, and I also like the contrast of black and white. And each of the pieces in the series uh, has a different color. Uh, so there's one that's indigo, one that's called goldenrod, one that's called greenwood. So pulling out the different aspects of the natural landscape. Oh, beautiful. I especially like this copper. So is that just a copper color or are you using copper leaf or anything like that in your pieces or? No, it's a copper, it? it's acrylic paint. Oh, oh it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And then after I've done the drawing, then I usually go in with some collage. So the black rectangle that's torn um, and the white beside it are papers that ha I have collaged on top. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely. Mm. So if anybody has any questions for any of the artists speaking tonight or even the artists that aren't here, you can put them in the chat. Uh, we are watching the chat and we'll try to answer those um, as they come up. I think we have Charles Wakefield, Kate. Yep. I'm here. 
Awesome. Hi, Charles. Hi, how's everybody? Good. How and, are you? Oh, pretty good. Thanks for being here. And thanks for doing this. Um, this is one of my from one of my favorite places to paint, which is uh, Leslie Street Spit. And mm -hmm. we're looking out over the Toronto uh, Outer Harbor. And in the distance, you can probably see the Toronto Island and uh, maybe the edge of uh, Cherry Beach. Mm -hmm. It's called Southwest Winds because that's where the wind was coming from that day. And uh, it's a plein air piece. Uh, I do a lot of my work uh, plein air. And uh, I, do, I used to do a lot of work down in this area by the Outer, outer Harbor Marina. And uh, uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, uh, we don't get back in there to uh, paint much these days. But uh, this was painted a couple of months before uh, COVID started in the late fall. <clears throat> and uh, it's, um, for me, I like to paint water and uh, I find it a particular challenge and uh, something I enjoy doing. And so tying it into this show, uh, it's um, where I would like to be painting these days, but these days I'm doing other stuff and having right. to work in my studio, which is not nearly as much fun as uh, getting out in the sun and the wind. And uh, so anyway, that's... Is this acrylic or is it oil? It. Uh, it's oil on birch uh, panel. And I uh, prep the birch panel with uh, uh, shellac. To, uh, and you can see the birch panel coming through in a few places. Mm -hmm. uh, I use that as... Uh, um, to add a little bit of accent in the uh, in the paintings. Yeah, I love the way you've got the waves just kind of kissing the rocks. It's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it is. I love the um, the sort of warm colors in the water and the sky. I think, like, I guess it was the time of day that you were doing the painting as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I it took a couple of hours to do this, probably three three hours or so. And the uh, light started to change a little bit. And so I I normally start off with the sky. And, uh, but initially it had been, uh, it had been white, which is kind of right. boring. And mm -hmm. so uh, with the, the changes of the, of the day, um, I was able to add some, some color to the sky to make it uh, look a little warmer. And well, uh, I guess I guess it's a, a long term view then, because I think for plein air painters, I think that's one of the challenges, right, is how the light changes and capturing. Yeah, you could have morning on the top and the afternoon. In the, the bottom well, I, I, usually, I usually try and get them done in about three hours. This right. is 16 by 16. So it's at the limit where uh, um, where, where I can paint it uh, reliably and finish it in a number of hours. But you have to you have the time when you start it and when you're going to finish. Uh, right. to see what the light's going to be like at the end, because uh, often the best light is just as you're packing up. Okay. Invariably. <laughs> okay, that's All beautiful. Right. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Well, I think the next uh, piece of work we're going to profile is Sherry's. Yep, Sherry Hart. Yeah, and Sherry Hart's not with us tonight, so maybe we can just uh, bring it up, Kate, and we can just chat about it for a minute. Yep, it's up, so you're probably just a bit delayed. So, um, you know, people who know Sherry's work, it's, she's very involved in uh, sort of meditation and tranquility and really trying to capture um, and really sort of embody what's what's going on in the body and how that kind of reflects out in terms into the world in terms of things like beauty. So, um, you know, she is one of these artists who the end result is often seems very simple and yet there's many, many lines and layers and things that happen um, to kind of create that that level of simplicity, all the hidden work that goes behind um, finally producing the final piece. Um, and so this is no example, it's uh, it's very much like that as well. And in real life, you can certainly see some of those layers and textures that happen. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, just for some of the viewers, if you are on the Leslie Grove Gallery store and you get, if you actually click on a piece of work and you bring it into um, just, uh, sort of like to almost check out, you can click on it and you can zoom in. So you can actually zoom in and see some of the detail on some of the pieces. Um, so, I, so I just wanted to share that. Mm -hmm. Until hopefully the next time where we can see them in person. Yeah, yay. <laughs> um, so I think the next 
artist is Darlene Winfield, and she should, Darlene, you should have your work with you, I think. Darlene, if you're there, if you can speak up. Yes, I have it. Okay, excellent. Okay, can you see me or? <laughs> no, I don't think you have your, you need to put your video on. Oh, okay. It should um, be on the bottom left of your um, Zoom. Start video? Oh. Is it? Okay, I hit stop. It says stop video, and when I hit it, it says start video. Am I there yet? No. No. Nope. Do you want to just pull it up, and maybe Darlene can just talk to it? Sure. Yeah. Is it? Am I here now? No. No. Nope. We can just see it, only see your name. So I can oh. bring up the piece though, and we can see it really well. It's beautiful. Pondering. Yeah. And so maybe. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you want to just share a little bit about uh, the piece, that would be great. Okay, I uh, I have painted a lot of landscape, and very often I'll paint clouds and distance, and then I will move to uh, trees and what's in front of me, and now I'm doing the pond. When I was doing the clouds, for me, it's a daydream to look at clouds and you daydream and you think about possibilities. When I painted the landscape of trees and distance, it was about where I'm going and what I'm doing. And then COVID hit <laughs> and I felt um, a little alone and um, I started being more introspective and that's where the ponds came from because I thought we're kind of like that. We were a pond in a way with all kinds of things going on inside of us, but Nothing is entering it. Nothing, no water's flowing out, no water flowing in. It's coming from below. So that's where they came from. And I wanted to create like a feeling of beauty in my own little bubble. Well, the colors are beautiful. I love the softness. It's very tranquil and calming. I needed that. <laughs> I think everyone does. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Yeah, that's some of yeah. my favorite colors in there. Oh, thank you. I, I used to paint those flat, those kind of colors more years ago. And it's almost like I've gone back in time. I started thinking about how I used to decorate, what I used to do, the colors that I, I would wear. And I, I went back in time to colors that I used to use, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And mm. they came to the surface. Lovely. Lovely. Excellent. And that's 36 by 36. Yeah. Thanks, Darlene. Thank you. Thanks for putting on the show. Thanks for coming and joining us. And I've got Deborah up next. Yes, correct. She's not with us. Um, okay. So maybe you just chat, show her piece and talk about it for a minute. Um, Hi. Yeah, it's, oh, Deborah is here. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. I wasn't planning on being on this, so I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. That's cool. Well, if you have any um, anything to share about your work, then I won't have to talk about it, but you can. <laughs> okay, well, um, I've been working with painter's tape. Quite, This is a new thing for me. Um, the one thing that the pandemic has given me is way more time to experiment. I had to stop working so that because of the pandemic, so because of that, I've been able to play with things that have been in the back of my mind for years. And this is one of them. It's called, it's, I basically um, map out the composition with painter's tape and then I color it in and this is the result. Um, and I'm really loving the process. I think it's a, it's a lot of fun and the most fun is when I pull off the tape. Um, <laughs> what, I like, <laughs> what I like about this, what, what to go with your theme is that it feels crisp and clean and fresh and, and I can breathe here. Right. And, I don't feel so closed in like with walls, like stuck in my home. So that's, and I've been, I've done quite a few of these now and they're pretty much almost always the same kind of a theme. Mountains, trees, reflection in the water. And it just I makes me, feel, makes me feel better. Thank you. So that, that's it really. And that's uh, 30 by 40. So that's a really good size. No, no it, that's not correct. I tried to correct it. It's 24 oh. by 30. It's oh, 24. Well, it's still but I, <laughs> okay. that's actually this is my this is my smallest one the other ones are all 30 by 40 yeah all right awesome 
Oh, cool. Well, we'll get that fixed on the store for you. Yeah, I tried. It yeah. didn't work. Okay. All right. And I've got Diana Rosa up next. Yeah, this Diana. Is one of my personal favorites. I love this one. <laughs> so it's fun. So <laughs> well, Diana, um, she's not with us, but um, I know that she often works like figuratively and um, abstractly like that. And it and has, I think, a lot of fun in her work. And this is kind of no, it's really not an exception to that, right? But it's uh, mm -hmm. an interesting take on a landscape. Yeah. Um, it's so also a really I, interesting take on a view from here. Like it's kind of obviously it's like a looking down, which is kind of a fun perspective. Yeah. And then um, sort of like humans with animals and each other and sort of that relationship. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, I like the piece. It's, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yeah. I think so. Um, I, th I think Diana Rose was uh, Rose, Rosa was um, raised in Cuba, and I think that that actually reflects in her perspective and her style as well. Um, for those who don't know her, mm -hmm. yep, very cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, I think our next artist is yes, also not with us. Yeah, so if you could pull that up, right there, yep. Um, so I, I just pulled up what um, what the artist had shared with this, and it's really it's um, based on a fond memories of a trip in Newfoundland, and that is no surprise. I'm here. I can talk. Oh. <laughs> Excellent. Hi. Hi. So yes, the last uh, summer when we could travel, I went uh, I went to Newfoundland for the first time, and uh, I loved all the colors of all the houses and. Uh, of course, I had also, so I took a lot of pictures and uh, um, a lot of them were of the sea, but this one was, I like the geometric aspect of it. It made it sort of more abstract mm -hmm. with all the lines and uh, the subtle colors. So um, yes, I have very good memories and I hope I can travel soon again to take more pictures and then come back and make more paintings. <laughs> Yeah. Well, at least this helps us travel a little bit with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I work with acrylic mostly, but um, I also like to do collage. This one is 18 by 24. Oh, lovely. On canvas. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks for jumping in there. Um, Kate, I think the next one is Gwen Tooth. And I think that she's here, but um, you need to show it, show it on your screen. I don't think she has a- It is work. already, yeah. Oh, it just takes Hi. a little while. Hi, thank you. Hi. Um, yes, I, I'm sorry, I don't have video capability tonight. That's uh, okay. So, uh, um, this uh, painting is, it's kind of a view from here because it's from a series I painted a couple of years ago. I've been in love with water for many years and I grew up on the beaches of Lake Huron and uh, I've painted since 2009 about different bodies of water. So mm -hmm. the last couple of years, I've been fascinated with Niagara Falls because it's, it's a day trip. I can go and when we were able to, we uh, took a couple of walks along the white, what's called the Whitewater Walk. And I was very impressed with the rapids. So this is the one painting in my series that is not green and yellows and, and white foam and everything. I just decided to do one that's, it's more of a relief, which I did with gesso and modeling paste and then built up and then just put pure gold on it. So it's kind of like um, like a limited edition, a one for every series I do. I, I did another series three years ago called Black and Gold, which was about um, the black and the, the, the ring series, the opera. So I did a totally gold one for that series. So then I picked it up with this one. Um, I forgot about it until recently. I've been switching back to doing Fauve's portraits for some of the things that are going on. And I think I'm gonna do a relief portrait. It's a self portrait that I did when I found my mother's wedding hat and I posed in it and did a selfie and did some portraits. So basically this is about the energy of the waves and the rapids and I do it from the shoulders with my arm and I work with my hands. I put gloves on and barrier cream and uh, just big movements to get the gesture and the boldness of the water mm -hmm. and the danger well, of it. Yeah it's interesting to have a piece like this in the show because it is um, so much just about that 
movement and energy. And um, how big is this? How big is the piece? I believe it's 24 by 36. Right. Yeah, it says right here at the bottom. Yeah, it's very gestural. Yeah. I really kind of like that movement. You can yeah. really see that's what it's what the piece is about. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. I like the color. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pleased to be part of the show. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And next we have Jennifer Ann Kelly. So I've got the piece up. It's probably delayed a little bit, which I would yeah. love to see in real life. This looks so cool. Oh, uh, yeah, I love it. So Jennifer should be here. Hi. Jennifer, yes, sir. If you can speak up. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me today? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Thank you very much for being, allowing me to be part of this uh, show. It's such a fantastic group of artists and artwork. My goodness. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, this piece is uh, uh, entirely made of glass with the exception of the trim on the glass box is copper. Otherwise, everything inside the box is, is glass. Um, and what inspired this piece is, um, very, uh, I've been working on this series for the last two years and um, in the last year, it has certainly intensified my and my interest in um, in smaller scale has intensi intensified um, when times are overwhelming sometimes it's nice to zoom in and look at small segments of our landscape and uh, the micro environments that I create are like otherworldly landscapes that allow for a dreamlike experience um, I've always been interested in um, looking at the forest floor and um, thinking about the life that's teeming within each small segment. And I find this is a very um, peaceful uh, activity. So for me to work on this subject has been um, very calming and um, an opportunity for a bit of serenity amidst all the uh, chaotic <laughs> exterior uh, events. And do you always put them in a box or do they stand alone sometimes? Sometimes they stand alone. Sometimes they're, they hang on a wall um, without the bigger, I do bigger pieces that um, hang on a wall without uh, or, hang, or, or sit on a plinth without the box. But um, um, the ones that have um, multiple elements inside, I've been um, placing in glass boxes. Oh, cool. Well, so I hope we get to see them in real life. Yeah. Awesome. And next we have Josette. And Josette should be here with us. Do you want to unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about your work? It's lovely. Josette, are you here? Yes, I am. Sorry, I didn't. Uh... Unmute. Yes, no I've, I've been uh, going back to, to painting uh, after 47 years of uh, teaching, but I was teaching connection with nature, meditation, uh, learning uh, nature, and learning also the science of uh, nature. Then now I'm back uh, to uh, to what I love to do, it's painting. And uh, I was at uh, the beaches uh, that uh, night. Uh, the clouds were really heavy. And uh, uh, what I felt, what I wanted to give, that was the impression that uh, we were almost like a sandwich between the gray of the snow and uh, the sky. And I really loved all the nuance of the, the sky and the uh, uh, the snow, but uh, there was some hope uh, with this uh, pier going to where the sun was still uh, there. And I really loved the, the kind of uh, green that the lake was that day, that is mm -hmm. usually not the star. Then it's a painting that is a little bit, I would not say depressing, but uh, it's not one of my uh, most uh, optimistic uh, painting. And uh, I came from uh, France, from a place, uh, I was brought up in uh, close to Barbizon to uh, where Millet painting the Angelus. It's places that are 
small that are always surrounded by something. And when I arrived in Canada, I discovered the group of seven and I discovered also there is no limit to the sky. There is no limit to the water. And that's something that is really beautiful. And that's something that I still enjoy taking and trying to, to give back. That's well, beautiful. I love the tension actually between the pier mm -hmm. and the horizon line. It's just, it creates this really interesting energy in the piece. Yeah, yes. and uh, the color, it's almost, almost like color blocking too. It creates a really good composition. Um, I really actually enjoy the piece and I, I don't really find it really depressing as you say, or <laughs> I, hopefully I think it kind of leads to that, the green, you know, not knowing, is it, is it a seascape? Yes, it is a seascape and your eye kind of figures it all out, right? That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, but thank you very thank much you. for letting me part of this show. Well, we're glad to have you. And this piece yeah. is 16 by 45. Oh, it's yeah. big. Well, it's uh, centimeters. Then if it's oh. uh, inches, oh. it's uh, 18 by 24. Oh, okay. okay. We'll need to make some adjustments on our site. So I think next up is Judy Ann Casimir. Judy Ann should be here. And I think, yep, there she is. Judy, can I have her you... piece up? Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Judy, do you want to share a little bit about um, your work, this piece in particular, and how it fits in the show? Certainly. This is, uh, this shows my prairie roots, and um, obviously a circular straw bale, and uh, I like the, I like the texture that is brought out by the cross lighting with the, uh, with the stubble, with the hay bale, and the uh, and the corn field behind it. Yeah, it's got some really great lines. And then with the mountains behind it and the sky behind that, it's really very deep. You get those deep layers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I actually uh, have a poem that goes with this, uh, this fine art photograph. So if you'll indulge me, I'll go ahead and read the, the poem. Sure. That'd be amazing. Awesome. Is called the continuous circle. A circular bale of straw, so tightly wound, so tightly bound. The straw, yellow straw, packed in together. The straws aligned together, one beside the other. Few strands stick out here and there, but they are one mass, one unit. They are so tightly bound, you'd be hard pressed to try and pull one straw out of the conglomeration of the whole bale. You would also find it very difficult to add a loose straw to this packed bundle of golden straw. The spiral, the continuous circle, never really ends. It continues on and on. You never come to the last straw, not yellow, but golden. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Thank you, Judy Ann. Thanks, Judy. Thank you. You need to put that in the book. <laughs> Next, we've got Karen McLean. Is her piece is coming up? Yeah, Karen's not here, so we can uh, bring that up and maybe talk about it or showcase it a bit. Yep. Um, what Karen did say about her work, I'm just going to read here. It says, "We are all waiting right now, waiting for life to return to normal, to be able to see our loved ones again. During the dark night, these feelings are intensified." So you can yeah. see. Well, you totally get that with the single light yeah. there, looking in the window. It's like that little spot of hope again. <laughs> yeah. And the single star too is kind of makes it interesting too. I guess that's mm -hmm. kind of supposed to also be the hopeful component. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can kind of see that it's waiting. Yeah. It's so nice this is 16 by 20. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Or is it a satellite? It could be that too. We don't know. All and right. Next I think on the screen, Keith Thurgood. Correct. And I don't, Keith's not here either. And I can read a little bit. So this is called Four Shoot Spring. Um, and Keith says, my approach to painting depends upon my mood, the conditions and as a direct response to the subject matter. With most subjects, I work loosely and attempt to capture that essence while it's still fresh, to simply play with color, strokes and simplification. Yeah, I totally get that with his work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the color of the rocks. It's cool. 
I was going to say the same thing. I love that purple. <laughs> cool. So that's 12 by 16. And again, for those who are just joining us late, um, all these pieces of art are for sale on the Leslie Grove Gallery um, site. Um, so hopefully you can take a look at that. And then we've got Lori Maitland's uh, used glass enamel piece. Yeah, so Lori should be here. So Lori, maybe you can unmute yourself. Yep, can you hear me? Yep, yep we can. Okay. So, just a little bit about the, the process or the piece itself before I talk about the theme. So it's glass. It, each pan of those three sections is made up of five panels uh, that are, I individually paint different sections of the scene on those five and then stack them and then put that grouping into a kiln, which then fires it's in there about three days and comes out. So it's three solid blocks of glass with the picture then captured inside. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of just the general process. Wow, um, wow. For the, the, for the, oh, and then the, by doing it, it doesn't show well um, on the screen, but because it's done in layers like that, and there's different sections of the, the scene on the different layers. You can almost see around the and behind the bridge and allows the light to come in and kind of bounce off and cast a more natural shadow as it kind of hits the paint where there's paint and when there's glass. So it kind of adds a third dimension to the piece when you can see it in person. Mm -hmm. I bet. So well, especially I picked the, the theme of the bridge. Yeah, yeah. So I picked the theme of the bridge for this because it was kind of a play on man-made furniture and on like architectural versus more organic shapes. And not only does the bridge affect the natural untouched view, but the elements and nature affect the view of the bridge. So with palette, it goes from shiny to a more modeled and textured finish. The, boards age and the, the metal ages. So how there's almost a relationship between the environment that the bridge is in playing with it and it playing with the environment. So that's kind of the idea of it. It's actually a bridge that is close to where I live, just outside Marrickville, but half a lot in Kingston. And it was built in the 1900s. And it's one of the few last standing uh, metal trusses still operational. Hmm. So it, it shows a lot of history. And I like the, it's kind of a romantic idea of a bridge, not only connecting two passageways or two shores, but because it's historical, it's connecting the past to the, and hopefully will still be standing to, connect us onto, onto the future and kind of connecting from past to what we do now. So that was the idea of, of kind of the view of, or how it affects the view. That's beautiful. I'd love to see it in real life. It's, you're right, glass doesn't quite show. You need almost that textural light coming through it to really fully experience it. It's great yeah. to have yeah. uh, different mediums uh, showcased in this work in, in this show as well. So it's uh, really interesting work. I would like to see that person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks so much, Lori. Um, so okay, the next piece, Les Leslie is not here. Um, okay. For something completely different. <laughs> really different. Um, so she says, my interests are focused on color and realism. Yeah, well, you can certainly see where she's taken a view from here as uh, as kind of mixing kind of the human and the and the dog, which kind of has been uh, is very interesting the way she structured that. Yeah, it's a different take on a view the view from here, right? Like it's uh, yeah. pretty interesting. Like, yeah, because she even shows uh, like the human hands, right? The, yeah, and the wedding uh, ring. Yes, uh, I'm here. Oh. 
Oh, oh excellent. Well, you can talk about it better than we can. <laughs> I'm Maybe sorry. you can tell us a little bit about um, how this piece um, reflects um, the theme of the show, Leslie. Well, actually, I thank you for inviting me, but um, I, I didn't even realize that it was landscape. So you can interpret the view from <laughs> the dog in the outfit. <laughs> I, I, it doesn't really uh, match the theme of the show, but um, I, uh, I, I don't like, uh, I like to keep on changing my style because um, I get bored with doing one kind of theme. And when the um, COVID started and I was by myself, I went to visit my daughter. She has a, a dog walking business. And then I, I had a dream about why not get the personality of the dog and fit it in with an historical painting, you know. So um, I see the dog and I, I just pick. So this is a famous painting but then I, I fit the dog with the painting. So I just uh, decided, I had dreamed it up and I didn't think it was a thing uh, <laughs> that uh, people uh, painted this. I just thought it was uh, like my idea, but it, you know, no ideas, it seems to be new. So um, I just did this series of the animals in historical outfits, um, just uh, a series of them. So, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, I just, uh, and then I, and my grandson put it on TikTok and I had like uh, 27,000 kids <laughs> email <Wow>. me, <laughs> not email me, but uh, I couldn't believe it, how they, uh, you know, really liked, liked the dogs and that. So, um, you know, but now I'm moving on, I'm, doing reflections now in uh, water reflections so actually that's more in keeping with the theme of the show but anyway thanks for inviting me um it's uh very awesome. nice of you. well and obviously the jurors saw something in that that did reflect the theme so that's always interesting yeah. <laughs> okay thank you yeah it's uh very quirky i really like that right it's a different <laughs> perspective it's a different take yeah all right, Lynn. We've got Lindsay Smalls up now. Yeah, awesome. Oh. Sorry. There she is. Hi, Lindsay. Hi there. Do you want to maybe talk a little bit about your piece and the theme? Yes. Um, my piece is called Sun Shower. It's uh, twenty-four by twenty-four. I um I live up uh in cold water, just this sort of southeastern end of Georgian Bay. And I spend a lot of time uh, on the water um, paddling. I stand up paddle a lot and swim. And um, I wanted to create something that gave you sort of the view from here, but in a, an immersive kind of way. And um, when you go out in the morning, uh, there's, you know, sheets of mist rising off the water and the sun coming through. And uh, uh, it had started out with a relatively conventional, you know, low horizon. Well, I think we're losing her a bit. Kate, can you hear her? No, I can't. I just didn't know if it was just me. I think it may no. be Lori. Yeah, I think it's Lindsay. Lori. Lindsay. 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 Um, it's a beautiful piece, and I can kind of see what she was saying in regards to the, the kind of the feel of it. Um, is that seascape, that waterscape, and mm -hmm. sort of that mist. I love the colors and the movement in the piece. Oh, there she yeah. is. She's back. <laughs> so, um, Lindsay, we just lost you there a little bit where you were yeah. kind of um, talking about your you. piece. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love the colors. It's all my colors. The textures are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I was, it's saying my connection's unstable. But um, so I was saying it's just sort of a conventional landscape and I was quite dissatisfied. And then I ended up um, getting out putty knives and dragging uh, paint up to get that mm -hmm. mist and... Uh, I was 
pleased with how that turned out. And then little mm -hmm. sort of detonation points of where the light's hitting the water. Yeah, it's lovely. Thanks. Very cool. All right, well, thanks so much, Lindsay. I think uh, Lisa's piece is next, Kate, um, there it is. And I think she actually has her work with her. If Lisa, if you're here, if you can unmute yourself. Yep. Hi there. Hi. So, Hi. So um, thank you very much. I'm uh, showing my piece, uh, Meander 1 and 2 tonight. They're twin sisters, uh, fraternal twins, I guess. They're different. But, um, this, uh, this series has been really interesting for me. It's a very different process. And uh, what I've been doing is I'm calling them mindscapes because I kind of dropped the, um, the process where I use photo references. And I used to do a lot of paintings uh, with photos from my travel. Um, mm -hmm. but with that now, I'm uh, really just going into my own memories and my mind. Um, I actually start the paintings with an underlayer of pastel and I literally just do blind contour drawings to start off the composition. Um, and I work large so that it's a, a very uh, physical gestural um, process as well. And then the same thing with the paint and brush, I'm just really meandering, like the title, meandering around with colors that are not planned and um, really just, I, I, I'm using the process more of the paint uh, to uh, let it take me where I wanna go in my mind. So it does not as a place. Yeah, it's really lovely. It's very, um, I like the freeness and the flowness and kind of like that, just like the free movement and energy. It just feels really loose. I think I like the looseness of it. Yeah, Thank you. And the, color it's beautiful palette, and the, the colors, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, definitely what I'm trying to achieve, a looseness and um, nothing planned, nothing real. Just give it a dreamy sense of somewhere, so. Yeah, so you're not the first artist tonight to talk a little bit about um, a change in their process or practice over the last year or two because um, they've had more time to exper experiment or try new things. And I think that's very, um, I think that's happening a lot with people right now. People are trying mm -hmm. new ideas. It's the, uh, there's an opportunity here for us. And I think that it's really successful on your piece. It's great. Thank you. Thanks so much, Angela and Kate. Thanks. Great art, everyone. All right. Do we need to screen share again or who do we have next? No, no. So next, I'm going to say this name wrong. Matt, Matt Tapp? Are you here? Yes, I am. Hi. I, I don't think I said your name right. Sorry. No, it is fine. <laughs> I know it is fine. <laughs> Matt Tapp? How do you say your name? Yeah, Matt Tapp. It's fine. Matt Tapp. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And I'm really happy to be part of that show, even online. It is still pleasure. So that's the painting, the watercolor painting that I done uh, in Milton. Milton is, uh, I, I'm sure, pretty sure that you know, uh, around Oakville, Hamilton area. Yep. And uh, what I did, um, so I, you know, I wanted to be in nature and uh, to be, not be in the public uh, and keep the social distance and this is stuff that right now we have to do. So I found a spot that really I like that view from there, but it was kind of very difficult uh, to be set up and do the painting from that uh, location. But, and that's how it's kind of related to the title of the show, the view from uh, here. Um, and also I like to have, uh, when I, I was doing that in the um, location, I really like the subtle, uh, stable um, trees and the movement of the uh, waterfall. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, and I really didn't know that it's gonna be in the show and I didn't have any plan for that. It was just uh, enjoying my time uh, with, um, by myself and just doing the waterfall. So that's it. Well, it's oh, a lovely beautiful. view. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And it's nice to have a watercolor piece as well. I don't, we often don't see that many watercolors um, in our show so that's really kind of wonderful to see it. it's beautiful the colors thank you so much thank you i appreciate thank it. you okay so and next mark glebers so if you can share your screen kate 
Yep. I share. Mark, are you here to chat with I us? I am here. Can know? you hear me? Can you see me? Yep. I can. All right, great. Okay, your piece is on the screen. Okay, I, I don't see it, but uh, I'll take it'll it be there. Oh, wait, there we go. There, there we go. I think so, it's just a bit of a delay, but yeah. So as I like to say, I'm a bit of a magpie. So I tend to collect all odds and ends uh, over the years because uh, this is a series from my assemblage collage pieces, which I've been doing probably for the better part of about uh, 10, 15 years now. And so the, the main component of the painting was actually a painting that got damaged years ago. I, did a, I had it in a show in New York and it got ripped in transit, but I just want to keep it. And what I tend to do with certain pieces if I refuse to throw them out as I take the components and I save them and knowing I was doing some of the mixed media assemblage works like this one, um, I then juxtapose it with, with different found and purchased items. Uh, so it could be anything as in this piece, which is uh, new and vintage picture frames, printing blocks, letterpress blocks. Uh, you'll see that there's a tin type photo. So it's sort of, I find that with the assemblage works, they become almost journals in the idea that there are stories that other people seem to feel that the works tell. Um, even the idea of the tin type photo, you know, is this a dedicated piece to a loved one, like someone who the only way he's able to get in touch with his loved one is through the memories of her photo that he keeps in his, in his uh, pocket close to his heart. So I always like to sort of have those hidden little stories and dialogues uh, in this particular series. So the whole piece has been mounted onto a wood panel and then it's all uh, assembled together in a floating white frame. And it, it's uh, 37 inches high by 13 inches wide. And it is, I believe, three inches deep. I love the yeah. fact that the bottom almost looks like books in a bookcase as well. Like it looks like it's a combination oh, of the yeah. old books, you know, that have these really beautiful tooled leather covers. It's really cool. Thank you. And I'm always looking at elements to add and take away. And, and uh, I have a whole series of these that I'll have for the uh, now the outdoor art exhibition as well, where I've, where I've expanded this further, uh, the series further. So it'll be fun to re-explore all this uh, monkey business again for this yeah. show. <laughs> well, it's awesome. I, I really like the story that your work tells. And then I like the fact that we can kind of like add to it ourselves and people can kind of interpret it. Yeah, I tend to have a very loose story with any of the assemblages because I find that people tend to have their own emotional reaction to them. So mm -hmm. I, I sort of leave it to them to decide what, uh, what the story is. I may just sort of guide them along, but I'll let them ultimately decide what they're looking at. And isn't that just the beauty of it? Huh? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much. Oh, my um, pleasure. Thanks for doing this. So, Kate, you want to bring out Michael's, Michael Zorowski is next. Yep. Um, he's not with us, but if we can just like take a look at his piece quickly, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. You see it? Not yet, but I can read a little bit about what he said about his piece in his statement here. It says, looking across the lake in the morning as the dark becomes gray, slowly lifting to a lighter gray still, and then color seeps into the gray. Gray is gone and everything is lit. Watching everything slowly come out of the shadows into daylight, there is a whole awakening each and every morning. In the evening, the color, color slowly drains away until the cell, sun drops below the tree line, taking all the color with it. Hmm. Well, it's a lovely piece. Yeah, definitely. It's a bit different than some of the usual stuff that I've seen. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit softer. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Northern Lake. So. Cool. Awesome. And that's 20, 40. All right, yeah. and I'm going to move now on to uh, Olina. Yeah. Uh, Olina is also not with us. So I can read what she said here about her work, uh, kind of like inform the piece while you bring it up. It's actually called Lilies in Daylight. My passion for nature is reflected in my painting and much of my imagery I find just by opening my door outside in the ever changing landscape and in my garden. I want the viewer to be able to feel like they are actually there. Very cool. Yeah, it's lovely. Well, that'd be nice to have in your garden. Just open your door and see that. <laughs> yeah, I'd love that. <laughs> um, next and is Pam. Yeah, and she's yeah. here and she has her piece with her. Or she okay, shares. So, so Pam, if you can unmute yourself and chat a little bit about your work, that'd be awesome. Actually, if you could pull up my piece, that would be great. Are you able All to right. do that? Thank you. Yeah, I can totally do that. 
I think that okay. the images do show well on the screen. So they really do. They really do. Um, as it's coming up, I just wanted to thank you for doing this and for organizing this show. It's great. It is my first online show and wow, it's a treat. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have you as part of the show, Pam. Maybe thank you, you. want to tell us a little bit about your um, Canadian landscape here and mm. how, how it's reflected in the theme of the, of the show. Okay, so when a view from here is absolutely amazing for this particular piece. Um, this is a view from Newfoundland. I was fortunate enough to be able to spend the last five or six months in Newfoundland coming back in March. Um, and uh, my practice is to do plein air painting, to do small little sketches and to photograph, and then to bring them back into the studio. And I'm always trying to play with that kind of um, that kind of definition or that realm between abstraction and realism. Mm -hmm. So that's always kind of that push pull, which I'll often put a screen of trees or a screen of something in front, which kind of gives you that angle of view, kind of you're looking into the distance and it gives a depth. And yet the pieces that are in front, which in this case are these birch trees, um, kind of lend an abstraction to it. So I love exploring that. And if, when you go into this piece and you go into little details, I'm not sure if you can see my, my cursor or not, anyways, when you go into the little details of it, they become. Oh, Pam, you just hit your mute button. There we go. Thanks. They, they, thank you. They become these little kind of abstracted little um, details unto themselves. At any rate, um, painting Newfoundland is absolutely amazing. And it was really different for me because I usually paint Georgian Bay or the Quarthus, which I, I will return to shortly. But the idea of the Newfoundland landscape felt so out of context for me. And it did take me a little while to get comfortable with the Newfoundland landscape, changing my color palette quite completely, but I'm really loving it. And, I'm, and I keep on looking at my Newfoundland work and I kind of think, how am I gonna bring this back? Or how am I gonna pull this into the Ontario landscape? But it is about the view. Um, this is the Skirwink Trail, if anybody knows uh, Newfoundland and it's near, um, near Trinity in Newfoundland and it's just it's a different form um, and there's this sense of history and there's this sense of depth that is there that I was really trying to capture uh, capture with it. Oh it's mm -hmm. lovely thanks so much Pam. Mm -hmm. it's very uh, very group of seven-ish there's definitely some elements of it. Yes yeah yeah the brush strokes there are great. Uh, Paul's piece. Yeah Paul if you can unmute yourself yeah, and here. I just um, did. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, we can. Sure. Um, I've got it here if you want to. Sure. Uh, instead of showing it there. Yeah, so it's sitting behind me. Uh, I'll bring it closer a little while. But last summer, I was, uh, I, I camp and I paint out there, take photographs, paint, and do everything out while I'm camping. So last here I uh, was traveling through Ontario and I was camping at uh, uh, Pancake Bay on uh, uh, Lake Superior. Um, absolutely fantastic shore in that campsite. The, the sand was amazing. One morning I came out and uh, um, there were these two kayaks sitting on the shore uh, just waiting for somebody to use them. So I took some photos of them and uh, I'm also working on, I create my own uh, uh, canvases, stretchers. So I do weird shapes, but I try to um, capture what it is that I'm seeing. The biggest thing here is it was a beautiful photo, absolutely fabulous photo, but I'm working my, myself into uh, to try and get as close to minimalism as possible. So the hardest thing that was uh, that 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 I had with this piece is getting rid of everything that was superfluous except for the subject, which is the kayaks. Oh, um, interesting. You can you can see them close up, and then the three dimensionality of the piece. And you can see the back, the, how I stretch them. And I, I work mod modularly. Um, so 
th th this is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to work my, I, I'm, I'm, I want to use photography and really cut it down just to the, the, the main subject. And I just use, uh, so I, I would paint the background and I'm again, using only one or two colors in there and then print that subject on top and put it on, uh, stretch it onto canvas um, where the shapes support what's happening on it. So this is actually just a sketch of a bigger one. Oh, lovely. Which I did later. And mm. uh, uh, I didn't do it on that because I was only three days on that campsite. Right. But later on, I moved down. I was at uh, Earl Row, and that's where it was created. Oh, that's great. Uh, Thanks, Paul. Decided. Thanks, Paul. Well, it's really, uh, Paul's work's really unique in that he creates his own canvases, but they're also shaped and it's three dimensional. But what's even cooler is that he prints and he does everything on a campsite. I can't believe yeah. that, Paul. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. <laughs> so, Kate, the next few artists you're going to have to pull up because okay. uh, I don't think they're with us, but uh, I think. Phil Fake is next, his piece. Okay, I got it up. It'll just take a second. Yeah, so I'll just read what he says here about his piece. Um, I work plain air, preferring a large urban landscape, using it as a scaffold to, oops, discuss the human narrative. Pink House is inspired by how living nest, nestled beneath rows of condos gave us real access to the river. Hmm, okay, that's cool. That's lovely. Next, we have uh, Poonam, and it looks like you are here to talk to us. Yes, I'm here, um, and I'm thrilled to be part of this. So thank you for organizing it. Um, yeah, so this is uh, uh, based on a photo I, I took in uh, one of my daily pandemic walks. And um, the sun was really low, so the shadows were long. And I just felt that it, and I, I tend to walk in the alleyways now because um, I, I just love the graffiti and it's also a way to um, avoid being in close contact with a lot of people um, that you get on Main Street. Um, so I just, um, I thought the photo really captured the sort of the sense of um, loneliness that uh, some people are feeling during the pandemic. And so I tried to be very sparse with my mark making with this, although I did have a little bit of fun with the graffiti and the robots. Um, yeah, so it was it was a, an approach to less is more, uh, but also capturing like the sunlight um, from the, the setting sun. I love the figure, like it looks like she's struggling a little bit to walk. And I think that's just kind of really, <laughs> great kind of capturing that whole how we're all feeling with uh with covid and isolation and stuff yeah and the composition how it directs your eyes to that yet you see the shadow is quite strong and the color mm -hmm. it's beautiful I, it's really great i love it thank you thanks for your telling us about it and next we've got raquel and i don't think she's here so okay. I do, i'll wait until you pull that up so i can read what she wrote here um, so what she shared with her work is, at home or traveling abroad, I am always in search of the best views. As we're still in lockdown, these landscapes have helped me travel when I cannot leave my home. There is always a place to go when I look at where I have been. Oh, it's interesting. Hmm. It's really, that's a really a nice thought. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Remember where we've been <laughs> and enjoy those and enjoy that during this time. It's beautiful. And that was 24 by 36. Yeah, the green's lovely. Mm-hmm. Now we've got Richard Levine. And I don't believe he's here either, so I can just uh, read what he's written here. Um, I enjoy uh, photographing my surroundings while traveling. I find that photography is a perfect means to capture moments that would otherwise be erased from memory. This is called Graffiti by the Glacier. Yeah, it's quite striking, the juxtaposition between natural and very, very unnatural. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the color, the color uses there is pretty interesting as well. It's lovely. Mm -hmm. And next up, I have Sabine. And I will read as well because I don't think Sabine. Sorry, I'm just scrolling up here. I don't believe that Sabine is here. Um, so 
It's called Come Away With Me. I love nature and one of my favorite things is to find inspiration in beautiful hidden coves and white sand beaches, wild fields and old barns or craggy cliffs and sheltered harbors. So. Yeah, I love how she's sort of though taken the kind of the basic elements and minimalized them to the basic shapes and basic colors. And yeah, it's really, uh, it's quite interesting, very dynamic. Mm -hmm. And yet still able to put that movement in and the movement sort of in the water is reflected in the movement in the trees. It's quite, it's quite nice. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And Sinead, Sinead? Yeah. Um, I'd like to be right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice and warm. I love the color. Um, again, I don't think um, the artist is here. It's called Nothing Succeeds Like Excess. Well, I like that excess with the floral there. Bright illuminated tones become softly abstract shapes, formulating a magical view of Italian villas, countryside and cityscapes, romantic interpretations of the slower rhythms of life and moments frozen in time. Beautiful. Hopefully we can travel there soon. Yeah. And Sheila Thompson, I think she's at home with a migraine today. Yeah, I just give her, like, I don't think she's actually made it here. So um, her piece, Sheila is um, a fiber artist. So her work is quite interesting because it's very um, textural. I have a small piece here actually at first, but um, it's um, got a lot of texture in it and it's um, really, really lovely. This piece is called Unoccupied. I can read a little bit about what she says. What will the natural environment look like as a consequence of human intervention? Oops, sorry, I just scrolled away from it. And she says here, um, sorry, as a consequence of human intervention, in invention, sorry, intervention and climate change. This is the premise of my latest felts, Habitat 2050, which immigrates landscape and habitats of the future. I use well felting techniques to combine wool, paper, and silk images of plants and field notes, which are then hand molded to form a future terrain. I use imagery of plant material like bark, lichen, close-ups of rotten logs to form the top of topography of hills and valleys in order to link the smaller elements of the nature, uh, sorry, the smaller elements of nature to the bigger picture of landscape. I imagine scars, fragmentation, and loss, but always pockets of hope where humans and plants thrive. Yeah, it's beautiful. You can see it's actually quite three-dimensional, I think, her piece. So, it's, yeah. so that wetting the felt, I think she really manipulates it a lot and then um, incorporates elements in it. Her work's quite um, warm and beautiful and very tactile. Mm -hmm. So it's hey, habitat. Yeah. Oh, Steve Eiselman. I think he's he's here, so you can talk to his work. That'll be better. Yeah. Hi, I'm <laughs> I won't stumble in. over it. <laughs> uh, con continuing on with the, the 3D uh, uh, theme, uh, let me let me start by by uh, saying I'm really happy to be part of this show. Um, I consider myself new to this uh, community, uh, but I, I I really crave the, this uh, uh, these art artistic interactions. So so uh, thanks for this. Um, so this, this is a, a work from uh, this year, and it's a result of some experimentation that I've been uh, doing with the juxtaposition of uh, uh, curved and uh, straight edges. I, I just uh, love the way they, uh, they work together uh, in, in uh, one form. Um, I call this uh, uh, Van Vancouver Fog. Um, and what I wrote about it is uh, Vancouver is often blanketed in a a thick ocean fog, but unique to Vancouver is the intense flavor and hues of its fog. Uh, the briny blue from the Pacific and the tangy green from the deep uh, conifer forests. Um, and uh, an, uh, an interesting uh, um, a, a thing about uh, this piece is the, uh, so the, the, um, the colorful uh, uh, pieces, the, the straight edges, uh, are meant to be uh, buildings that are that are sort of poking through the through the uh, fog, uh, and they are in, in fact um, sort of uh, made of uh, made of uh, clouds. In in my process, um, I have a, a, a byproduct uh, when I'm when I'm uh, working with working with something. It, it creates these uh, wipe towers. They're called, and those are those are what I've. Uh, um, utilized uh, to make the, the buildings out of. 
Uh, and in this case, I, I, I utilized them from a, a prior piece, which was a, a, a sort of a Fog City re uh, rendition of Beijing. Uh, and so I, I uh, made a little uh, inside joke to myself that there's always a bit of Beijing in, uh, in uh, Vancouver. And what's your medium? Uh, th this is done in starches, uh, polylactic acid. So you're printing it, like you're designing and printing it? Exactly, yes. Oh, cool. It's really, really unique. That's yeah, really interesting. I, I really like this piece. I really like the, the pull and play of the organic shapes and then the harder lines. I totally get the whole buildings and then this cloud-like feeling um, or this abstraction of like the natural world, whatever the natural element is. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks for saying. How, how big is this piece, Steve? It's 11 by 11 and it uh, comes out about uh, eight inches. Oh, lovely. That's beautiful. I'd like to see that in real life. So perfect for, for somebody's little table there. <laughs> like a coffee table piece. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks so much. And we have another Steve, Stephen Rose. His piece is Yeah, he should be here. So Steve, if you can unmute yourself. I think it's actually Steven. <laughs> we call mm -hmm. him Steve Heiselman, but this is Steve. Um, I don't know, I don't see him popping up here. Steve, if you're here. Unmute yourself. Nope. Do you have anything you can read about what he said? I will. I'll just read his uh, artist statement here. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, there he is. Here. Excellent. <laughs> That's better. You can talk to your piece. Yeah, sorry about that. I just didn't uh, turn my microphone. Anyway, can everybody see me? We yeah. can. And we can hear you. Yeah, okay, good. Anyway, yeah, first of all, thanks very much for having me. Uh, I'm a new member of the Artist uh, Network, so I'm uh, glad to be here. And it's uh, been fun so far. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and and uh, anyway, yeah, so this piece is, uh, 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 it's a early, an early morning piece uh, that I did of uh, Wolf Island Provincial Park on Lower Buckhorn Lake. Uh, I'm trying to capture the early morning sun coming in through, peeking in through the clouds and with the uh, reflections of the water. Uh, this is done in uh, charcoal, uh, woodless, car uh, woodless charcoal pencils. Um, and uh, what's unique about charcoal is it's a very forgiving medium to use, meaning you can, uh, if you add too, too much, you can always take away. If there's too little that you put in there, you can always add more. Uh, I guess the key thing with this piece is, is to try to get your values correct. Uh, you, you know, your, your lights and darks. And, um, and that's, uh, that, that's the key thing to a piece like this, especially with charcoal. Um, with, with this theme, I think it goes very well because uh, last year, you know, I was trying to get out from the, the realm of where, I, where we are in the chaos in the city, you know, the uh, pandemic stuff and everything else. And I just wanted to find a spot that was peaceful just to see what it looked like, just to go somewhere different. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the, the one unique thing about the uh, Wolf Island is that uh, it's not accessible by road. Um, the other way that you get to it is by boat. Um, and um, it is a provincial park. Uh, it's, it's quite a nice place, actually. But the yeah. only way you can get there is, is, is by boat. So, uh, so yeah, the, I, the, the theme for me is, you know, like a very calming theme. An early well, morning. The piece theme. speaks a lot to that. I find like it's very serene. And because you have an almost exact, um, very specific reflection it's it right. kind of speaks to being very calm that's like right. a very mm -hmm. calm environment so right. yeah like i mean um you can see the little outcropping of rocks on the right hand side any of the water that's in forward in the image is crystal clear like glass uh because you know i i, I had took this reference shot of a quarter after seven in the morning and on mm -hmm. the other side uh, of the water further out into the lake, it's a little bit more rippled and disturbed by the by the wind. 
And so that's where you get all the, the nice reflections, you know, from the trees and the, and the, the small little islands mm -hmm. and, the, and the clouds as well. Well, so. thanks so much. It's a lovely piece. We're glad that it's in the show. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and welcome. Yeah, it's lovely. Susan uh, Brown is our next artist up next. And Susan should have her work with her, but let's just leave it up just for a minute until she joins us here. Susan, if you're here, can you unmute, please? Uh, yeah, hi, everybody. And I'm so glad to see some familiar faces in the crowd. Hey. And thank you for doing this. It's a, a lovely evening. Um, my piece is called Abandoned in Yosemite. And uh, it's part of an experience I had going to Yosemite National Park because my dream was to, first of all, see places where Ansel Adams actually did some photography in the, in the 19th and uh, early 20th century. So it was a little art historically influenced, but also I just wanted to see those gorgeous redwoods. So it was a phenomenal trip. And I call myself an art sedental artist, uh, an art sedental tourist, which means when I'm touring, I sort of try to find experiences that might translate into something artistic. So I brought back photography of this uh, particular view, which uh, it shows um, the cathedral rocks, which are a famous rock formation in the valley floor at Yosemite uh, along the Merced River. And as we were walking along, we just came upon this easel with the painting of the view on the easel. So, wow. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was like a play within a play, you know, a, an art piece within an art piece. And my view around that person's view, which I'm sort of in the, in the shadow of the trees, looking out at the light of the water and the landscape. But this person had just abandoned their uh, little station there with their easel but you could see they were painting the exact same view that I was looking at. So it was really, really fascinating. And um, I tend to try to fuse painting and photography um, in a kind of semi-magical way. So the center of the piece is mostly photographic image. Um, and I print photographs on a paper stock and apply them to a canvas. So it's a very physical, application of the photography. And then I integrate the photographic image with paint. So the, the idea is to hide where the photography ends and the painting starts or vice versa. So this is kind of my homage to Ansel Adams and, and um, my tr tribute to a, a lone artist who just wandered off while I was there and never came back. So I never <laughs> got to meet them. <laughs> But I thought it was just a cool thing, just coming upon somebody's work in the middle of the forest there. Maybe you were supposed to add your touch to it. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, no, Wouldn't no. they be surprised? <laughs> I learned long ago never to touch anybody else's artwork. <laughs> yeah, scary. But, uh, yeah, but I, I, I find that, you know, doing this kind of magical, you know, transition between painting and uh, photography suits me because I really don't have the patience to do it all in painting. And my photography skills are not as good as some of the other artists you've shown this evening. So I like to kind of mush them together. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Thanks. Lovely. Well, thanks so much. And who else do we have? Uh, w. Steve Cooper, he's here. All right. Steve. I believe, you... I, am I unmuted now? Yes, Kate, yes. you have to pull up his piece, please. Okay. While we bring up the picture, thank you very much for hosting this. I mean, I've been really enjoying the this evening, um, and thanks for everybody that uh, uh, all the artists that have participated as well. It's I've really been enjoying Some it. Great work. Yeah. <laughs> Is there's um, nothing like the artists talking about their own work? Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it opens up a lot to the scene for you, doesn't it? Really. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is. Uh, a scene in the uh, Pantanal region of uh, Brazil. Uh, it's a massive area. Um, it's like half the size of France or something. Um, wow. And it's a, it's a wetland and, and uh, the fields you see there 
um, for part of the year would just be covered in water. And, um, oh, wow. and so people get around by canoes and boats and horses during that time. And I was in there uh, coaching a small group of Canadian photographers and we just got out <laughs> as the rains were starting to, to, to hit. But um, the clouds were very, very uh, expressive down there, kind of, uh, yeah, a lot of, quite often you just see this, these really amazing clouds. What I wanted to capture here was the, the, the kind of restful, uh, contemplative mood of, of that scene after a long day out shooting exotic birds and um, with a camera. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the saddles have been put up to, to dry at night. The horses were in the, are in the pasture, they're all. And um, the, the, uh, I want to kind of feature the openness of the area because it just goes on and on forever. And um, so the difficulty was getting detail in the clouds and the highlights and also keeping those saddles in, in, in enough light so that it told the whole story. So as I was set, setting it up, um, the, the light just ripened and ripened and ripened and then it kind of went away and then the, it got just below the clouds in the far distance, the, the lower left corner there and bingo, everything, everything lit up warmly and we've got lights in the clouds and you can see the, the clouds just under that uh, clay roof there um, are getting tinged by some of the uh, kind of coral colors and things like that. So that piece yeah, is- It's, it's beautiful. It looks like sitting on top of that uh, the roof, doesn't it? They're so low. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They're, they're almost sitting on there. And then when you have the definition of the color on top of it, composition's incredible. There's a lot of comments here, uh, Steve. Oh, are there? Like, uh, yeah, about how uh, the composition is so beautiful and the um, exposure is pretty amazing. Like it's a great piece, actually, and I totally get that feeling um, that oh, you're good. explaining in the piece. Like it's just beautiful. Well, thank, thanks very much. It's almost I like it's almost painterly, like because it's got that pink, warm color throughout the whole piece. Like it's beautiful. I think you can you can thank the the light in that part of Brazil and the clouds for a lot of that, but, yeah. but well, I, was just, I was just broke, blown away by, by those aspects when I was down there. Cause you, you expect an area like that, it's flat. It's going to be, you know, maybe steamy and not great um, uh, long views, vistas because, because of I also the, love the fact humidity. that it's 30 by 45. So you've actually printed it in a really large scale. So you kind of get that feeling of being enveloped by the landscape. It's beautiful. Thank yeah, you. It's, I've done. Oh, thank you. And I've, it's in a, it's in a float frame, so it's kind of a narrow frame on the front, and it's about two inches deep. And it's, oh, I've done it to kind of, in a way that it looks a little bit, like a painting. I've, I've done it on canvas for that reason too, because it's got a kind of pastoral. Oh, it's effect. lovely. It's a beautiful piece. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I love it that Kate that we're traveling all over with these these works tonight. <laughs> I know, but it's just <laughs> makes me want to be traveling. <laughs> they stay in whole order, but at least we get to travel with everybody's work tonight. That's a beautiful uh, view from uh, view that I'd like to be able to see one day in yep. person. So the next few artists, uh, the last couple of artists we have um, uh, are not here with us. I I'm here. Oh, Wanda is here. Wanda, do you want to um, talk to your piece a little bit? Um, yeah, I wasn't actually prepared because I didn't see my name on the list, but um, yeah, this is, um, it's kind of three-dimensional, the the little, it, it's, it's um, reflect, I have nothing prepared. Uh, it's kind of reflective of the time we're in now. It's kind of dark and lonely. Um, mm -hmm. So this is actually um, the beach in Southampton, kind of seen from above. And um, the little pieces are just little bits and pieces of miniatures that I've had around. So it's actually three dimensional and you're looking down and there, it's um, mixed media um, and it's covered in resin. So it's all, it's very tactile on the bottom. Um, and then the water is smooth and dark and very glittery underneath. You can't really see it in the photo, but it's very 
sparkly. As so when you say like, it's resin, like, is it, like, does it have, like, is it actually thick? Like, are the pieces, all the pieces buried in the resin? Yeah, they're stuck in the resin. Um, they're, they're mostly made out of resin. Oh, um, lovely. Yeah, and like, actually- like, Do you make those miniatures or do you- I make some of them. Um, I've actually added to this piece. There's a little pair of flip-flops that I made. Um, you can open the little book. There's little pages in it. Oh, and wow. I have a bottle with a little note in it. Um, unfortunately, this is the, the older picture. Um, but yeah, there's a little, little um, glass bottle with a cork that you can actually pull out. And then there's a note which has my signature. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and those are real rocks. <laughs> They're real rocks from California. I think I brought them back from California and it's sprayed, it's all sprayed silver underneath. And then I put the, put the resin over top and it's layers and layers of, uh, of stuff build up underneath. Oh, I love that. It's like you're creating your own view. And yeah, you're adding exactly. to it. You're like, well, I just want a little bit more in that view. <laughs> and, and there's a little, that little, there's a little cup of coffee there with a teeny weeny spoon and, um, sitting on a rock and it's abandoned though it's, it's abandoned because we can't go out right. yeah it's, it's another piece that would be awesome if we could see it in person i think yeah like, and if you look yeah. at it sideways it's all three-dimensional so it's you can take right. a little little walk down the beach you know oh cool oh, that's good. you should do a little video post a video of it so people can yeah. walk through it with you i intend to <laughs> at some point no oh, lovely well thanks so much thanks for um joining us for that little chat Thank you. I think the last piece is Wendy's piece, Wendy. Kate, and yep. I don't think she's here. Have it up. Oh, there she is. She here? No, I don't think so. Um, so I can read what she wrote here. My contemporary abstract art is inspired by my time spent in nature, in deep reflection, contemplation, and healing. I imagine myself amongst the pine trees, watching the dancing lights move through the dark sky. For me, painting is an intimate, quiet, intuitive process. I think that speaks to what a lot of artists have been talking about. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. During, during this time, but that her piece has a lot of movement and energy in it as well, I think. It's a bit like the Aurora Borealis. Yeah, you can kind of see the dancing sky. It's lovely. Yep. And I think that is it. Yeah, well, that's awesome. It, I mean, this show's great. There's so, so much variety um, and takes on the view from here. So. Thank you to all the artists who were able to join us tonight and talk about their work. Um, and we're so glad that you're part of this show. The yeah, and really continue, continue if you can to try and help promote it because it's of course all the pieces are, are for sale. So it's always lovely when we sell something. Um, so promote it, but also take the opportunity to promote uh, the other artists that are in the show as well. It's kind of, it's always nice to uh, kind of partner up your promotions and um, it's, you know, you guys have done a great job. It's an amazing show and everyone should be proud to be part of that uh, really talented group for this show. It was nice meeting you all through this experience and I hope we meet again. I'm sure okay. we will. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. All right, Thanks. well, it's nice meeting everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you, Angela. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye guys. Great show. Thank you. Guys, good, good, luck with your, good luck with the show. Thank you. Take care. All right. So you can find all these works at lesiegrovegallery.ca. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, you've enjoyed the chat with all these artists. And we'll see you next time at our next okay. opening, hopefully in person. <laughs> all right. I'm going to close it off. All right. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye.